All right, we've got a bunch of people already here. Um, and we're two minutes past the hour, so we may as well start. Uh, welcome everybody, wherever you are and whatever time it is, uh, to the Qvert community meeting. Um, if we have anyone that is new or hasn't introduced themselves before, um, if you'd like to, you know, take this opportunity to, to say good day now. Mm -hmm. I'll take that as a no. Um, all right, I've got um, a few things. It looks like a lot, but uh, we'll cover it very quickly just because it's a giant list of uh, CFPs that are open at the moment. Um, the first and the most important is that uh, Qvert Summit. Um, hopefully everyone is aware that Qvert Summit is happening in two weeks' time, um, March the 29th to the 30th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, UTC. Um, the schedule is in the two links there, um, and you will need to register in order to um, attend. It is free. All you need to do is register with the CNCF events um, platform and um, yeah, and then and then turn up in two weeks' time. Um, it's a, 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 a dense and interesting schedule, so I highly recommend checking out and tagging a couple of things that'll be interesting for you. Um, the next is just a giant list of CFPs. Um, I, I don't do this all this time, but I had to do it recently, so I figured I'd paste it here. We've got uh, two dev comps, multiple KCDs, um, and also Open Source Summit EU 2023. Um, so that's all there. Um, I do try and keep the uh, Qvert Community Events page, which is in the wiki, um, up to date, and all these things are in there. And if you're new to this wiki, um, haven't really looked at it much, the Linux Foundation events and the CNCF community events, I don't know, if the, that's where the KCDs are, that's where a bunch of other things. Um, a lot of things might escape my notice. Um, and so if you do have 20 minutes um, in a week or something and you feel like going through them and something jumps out, um, please let me know. I'll add it to this, add it to this wiki and I'll, um, I'll popularize it and, and we can support you in your um, proposals and, and what have you. So, um, yep, that's it from me. Um, I see a giant table has appeared in the agenda, so I might pass this over to Ryan. Hey. Yeah, so uh, I want to cover, so Daniel and I want to talk a little bit about the next release. So is everyone that is aware the Qvert 051 release just recently went through on the new cadence? Uh, so I mean, congrats to everyone on, on migrating to this new release schedule. And I, with this release, there's going to be coming more changes. Um, I think we're going to see, and we're going to discuss a bunch of them in, in, you know, in future meetings. But I want to talk about here, um, I kind of want to set expectations with the community in terms of what's ahead with the next release. And, and so I, I have here a schedule, but I, before I go through the schedule though, I, I, I want to uh, turn it over to Daniel. And Daniel, can you talk a little bit about some of your expectations, like going into this next release, what are the things that like the community needs to uh, expect, um, you know, before we can actually tag a V1? Like what, what are your expectations for everybody? So, hey, hey everyone, can, can you hear me? Yep. Folks, yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so uh, to, to chime in about uh, what, uh, what we uh, got out of the last, um, I should say probably, I should call it somehow confusion uh, about what lanes should actually be gating the release or not. Uh, I, in a nutshell, it was like uh, that we settled on, uh, on um, so we want, what we first wanted to achieve was we wanted to change the base node platform on the provider to, uh, to a newer one. So that's why we created the uh, 126 provider on CentOS Stream 9. Um, then some issues arose that around Istio, which was not ready to be used with CentOS 9 since it still does use, did use IP tables. Um, and I think it still does, which uh, 
uh, CentOS 9 didn't support anymore. So we had to uh, some confusion about some tests that were not running uh, or that were failing actually. And we had some confusion about how we should proceed on that. Um, and that was caused in part by we us not being really clear what we exactly we wanted uh, to have as a base platform for testing. So um, what we got out of that was uh, in the end, we ended up with two provider versions that were testing the release. So we had eight base lanes uh, regarding to the sick lane. So the two times the sick lane for each 126 provider, CentOS 8 and CentOS 9 based. Um, and then there was another bit of confusion around how uh, or what lanes should be then be gating the mergers. So um, in the end, we we fixed all that and we settled upon that we want to have CentOS 9 as a base uh, for, for testing uh, on the NodeOS. And also we want to have uh, PSA enabled and so on. But that came out pretty, pretty late. Um, so yeah, it, it was a lot of confusion and um, what we got out of the retro, uh, which where we discussed about um, how we should proceed next time would be that we want to make clear or determine by a separate community meeting somehow. Not, I'm not exactly sure if it should be a separate community meeting, but it should be uh, inside the community meeting, for example, where we want to make clear what the next testing platform for the next Kubernetes release should actually be defined like. So like what features does it need? Um, what BaseOS would it probably need? And what other uh, things uh, would we want to have in order to be sure wh where we want to work against? So uh, what we want to do is we want to discuss before we start the next provider work um, to, to, to have it defined somehow by the community. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's in a nutshell or in a bigger nutshell probably um, uh, what we discussed. Uh, Ryan, did I forget anything? Do you, do you want to keep me honest or do you want to add anything on this? No, no, that what you said sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was gonna, I mean, the only thing I would, say i mean I, I was kind of i was about to write this is like um i was trying to summarize it basically like you know we def let's define we want to define the configuration for for the testing wings well in advance for this next release and then we want to clarify like that these all the sig lanes uh the the jobs need to be voting and passing before what did we say um before we cut the uh the release branch i think that's what it was yeah I think those are the two yeah, things. Exactly. Thanks, thanks for adding that. Yeah, that that's what I was for. I forgot. I guess, right? That makes sense. So yeah, um, just just as a last sentence on this this topic, next time we want to be a little bit better prepared so that we have a more uh, defined baseline. Um, on which we can which we can work against, so that we don't. So what the confusion caused was a lot of duplicate work that we did regarding duplicate lanes. Then we had to uh, solidify anything against uh, changing uh, changing things and even porting stuff back to the release branch in, in behind. So that was really not not that good. And from a retro perspective uh, scene, I, I'd say. So yeah, we, next time we want to avoid all this <laughs> in short. So should we go through the exercise now of actually going through and defining this? Do we have the right people and forum for this? Like, should we take a few minutes here and can we make the decision of like, you know, what, you know, what's the configuration? I think like things that we wanted to cover, right? These were like the things I had for notes that could affect us, right? Like. The release, the OS version. I mean, I think we know some of this. I, I don't know about the configuration, but we should know OS version and Kubernetes version. I don't. Do we need? Do we need? Can we take some time to talk about this? Like, do we know what this configuration should look like? Yeah, I, I, and from my opinion, uh, we should probably we should we could probably as well do that right now. 
perfect. Okay. So what, um, I mean, what do we need? To, so I think, I mean, I think these are defined. I mean, is there anything, does anyone have like configuration? I think last time it was the PSA, right? We wanted to have, is there yeah. anything that we know here that we need to require before we can, um, like we, that we need to say is required ahead of time? Does anyone know like any features we depend on 127 that the community depends on here? Does anyone know any comments? Okay, it sounds like there aren't any. I think what we need to do, Daniel, then if there aren't any specific configuration that we need to have, um, I think then maybe what we can do is take this to the mailing list. And if there isn't anything specific, then um, I think maybe what we can kind of carry forward is that we keep the status quo, we keep the existing configuration in place. Exactly. I'd say I'd say that that we should uh, somehow define that the configuration for 127 will be the same as the configuration for the 126 provider. That that should be something um, that that we should probably point out. And yeah, I think that Cuba Def would probably be a good place for people to chime in if they disagree. If that makes sense. If no one here already disagrees. Okay, sounds like there sounds like there isn't any comments. Okay. Um, okay, and one other thing about expectation, actually, I, I want to add in here, and Daniel, feel free to chime in. I think what would be, and she might have mentioned this, I or alluded to it. I think what it would be useful is that maybe what we could do is like in in these calls, if we have um, the right representatives, we can we can talk, um, we can just bring up where we are in the release. Um, just to sort of give, make people aware of the progress. Like kind of what I have in mind, Daniel is like, when you start working on the provider, you know, that's that's kind of a milestone for us when we when we have the provider complete and we're starting talking about the CI lanes being voting them, I mean, that's like another important milestone. So like things like that, we can, I, I think it would be worth, maybe we can reserve a section in the meeting in this community call just to get the word out so that people are aware, like, hey, it's time to start working on these voting lanes, you know, start, start working on stabilizing against this code. And um, and then same with, you know, when we're getting close to doing, when, we're, when we branch, when we feature freeze, and then we kind of working towards the, the final release, same same kind of concept. We, we use the community call to communicate with uh, where we are. Actually, that makes total sense. And, and I think at, at some point in earlier meetings, we did that. But since I think uh, for quite a while, the, the introduction of the, of the uh, Kubernetes providers went pretty smoothly. Um, so we disregarded or we, we stayed away from doing this. And yeah, now, now that we are, so I think we should have done that also upfront because we were changing the Kubernetes uh, provider entry somehow since we were starting with an RC candidate already. So I think in hindsight, we should have done that right away. So um, because the provider setup was was being changed somehow. Yeah, I think that makes total sense to just um, keep a quick update on how we stand or where we stand on the Kubernetes provider. That makes sense. Okay. All right. All right, any other comments on, on what was discussed? Otherwise, I'm gonna to go to the schedule. And do we wanna consider CDI in any of, it, of this? We can. I, I'm not sure if- like, the... like in the schedule you mean, or like just kind of talking about it in the community call? Yeah, in, 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 you know, uh, in the configuration, because that we deploy a certain version of CDI automatically at this point, so. Um, <laughs> And that's probably um, not the version that CDI, because CDI releases at the same cadence. So, or, or maybe like a, a week later. Um, so the CDI version that we're testing against will be older than the actual release CDI version. Do we want to release uh, CDI sooner? 
is the question, I guess. That That's a really interesting point. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, we're always just consuming inside the Qubit CI. So for everyone who is not aware of that, we have the CDI bundled inside the Qubit CI provider at the moment, and we are just consuming the released versions. And it might make sense when we're setting up a new provider to, for example, also include newer versions like RC versions or something like that, or even beta versions. I don't know what makes the most sense here, but well, yeah. CDI, CDI is, uh, I think the last release we, we did on RC a couple of weeks before we actually made the CDI release. And before that, we've never made an RC or a beta version or anything like that. We were just releasing every three weeks and you know, you would just grab whatever the latest was. Uh, but since we're now on the same cadence, it, you know, we probably need to uh, get CDI sorted a little bit before um, before we consume it in the Kubert side. So, so Alexander, that would mean so that would mean then um, when you guys you you have your your cadence, it means that you guys need to tag these releases for CDI and then. Um, so like, you know, thinking about this in terms of schedule, like before we can, we, like Daniel's working on the, starts working on the 127 provider, we need to have a, we're saying we would want to have a CDI release candidate somewhere that we would consume. So the expectation is that you tag that ahead of time and then we would consume that if, if we wanted to go to this route of. That's sort of my to, question. Do we want to do that? Okay. Cause it's going to be a lot of extra work on the CDI side. Cause I'm going to have to start porting a lot of stuff once I make it release. Right. So. Okay. I mean, well, I, mean I, I mean, we, we could still, sorry to chime in, Ryan. I was just okay. thinking we, we can, uh, we can still uh, just install another or a more recent uh, CDI version, I guess, from, uh, from, from the repository somehow. Um, so now that I think of it, I think it makes the most sense to just bundle the uh, the stable version with the Qubit CI provider. But if people need uh, more advanced features, like from unreleased uh, CDI versions, then it would probably make sense to just install that um, like like in the usual way. So um, and and just uh, yeah. The, the only backdrop drawback would be then that that we just probably would not uh, spare the bandwidth somehow uh, that we that we get now by just uh, using whatever is the latest uh, release CDI somehow. Right? Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense. I think the only you know real time we'd want to use a a more recent CDI version if CDI makes any major API changes and and we haven't done that in a while and I'm not. You know, I'm, I don't think we're going to do it um, in the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, so I think we're okay with just consuming whatever the stable is. Um, I just wanted to mention CDI here because there's a lot of testing that uses CDI. And if we're using a weird feature in, in CDI or a new feature in CDI that's you know needed for the testing, it might start failing. And that's, that's the only reason I mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we could probably introduce something like um, like a mechanism in Qubit CI that would probably grab the latest or or a different version that that you would need to consume somehow. But yeah, I yeah, you could either just install it by by using the manifest somehow, or yeah, I'm struggling a little bit. I, I guess I, I'll keep my mouth um, closed now. Sorry for that. Well, I, I guess the, I mean, I, for, from my perspective, it's it's sort of what level of support. Like, I mean, this is this sounds like uh, like it would be a big commitment for me, Alexander, to do this kind of thing, and and for what you're saying is that the gain is is like since there aren't all since you haven't had any major breaking changes, it's, it sounds like the gain is well, we get maybe one newer release version, but. It might not be something we see. Um, like, I guess what I'm saying is like, I, like this bullet point here is like maybe we should wait till this use case appears where we have, we want to do a Qubit release and we need a specific CDI feature that's not going to be that's only going to be in the newest version of CDI, and, and maybe that's when we should look doing this. Otherwise, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of work and a big commitment from you to be able to pull this off. 
Exactly. Okay. So I, I think we should leave it as it is right now um, until we actually have a, a need for it. Uh, I, I just wanted uh, to mention it so we consider it, that's all. Uh, and I, I think after talking it through, I think we can just consume the whatever the stable CDI is um, in our lanes. And if we run into an, an issue there, we, we can talk about it. Sounds good. That makes sense to me. I think I, I think that's probably the right way to go. I, yeah, let's 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 keep this in the back of our minds. It, that's good to know that we can now that the releases is under the same cadence. This is possible. We can we can consider this as an option. And if it becomes something that we consistently want to do, then maybe we can look at making it a consistent uh, feature that is supported. Okay. All right. Any other comments and thoughts about this before I go to the schedule? You know, I, I heard a quick question uh, sure. so while while talking about releases one thing i was trying to find out is the um upgrade test that is a kind of test where um current version of keyboard is installed uh, we run a bunch of tests that version is upgraded to the latest one that we are going to release um, and make sure that things continue to work. Do we have um, lanes that um, that track those kind of tests? I would be interested in um, finding out that the upgrades are working right before the release. I think the operator lane does that. I'm. I hope someone keep can keep me on honest on that, but I think. Uh, so we even we even had to change a little bit uh, when we were uh, trying to test the upgrade from 058 to 59, since uh, 59 is PSN enabled and uh, 58 is not. So of course, uh, upgrade um, uh, on PSA enabled cluster would not work for 59. Um, so I think we had to. What was it again? Uh, yeah, we had to split the lanes into one part PSA enabled and one PSA disabled. I think you can still see this in the 059 um, lane configuration somewhere. Um, okay. Yeah, did I forget anything? Any Anyone else to chime in here? Yeah, hey, you're right. So um, one, maybe we can take this discussion discussion on Slack, but like I had a follow-up question as to when when you say the cube word operator operand test, does it actually test the, the entire life cycle of VM or it just tests that the upgrade is working um, as expected? To be honest, that I can't tell. I'm not familiar with what exactly the, the upgrade test tests. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll share more thoughts on uh, on Slack. But what I was thinking is that if we have some kind of test that can keep the API backward compatibility checks across our API surface, that would that would help us uh, gain confidence um, in in the upgrades that are working. And right before the release, we can track those those kinds of tests. Um, yeah. All right. Hi, I just want to mention we already have some kind of test. Uh, so what we do is we downgrade for the previous release and then we do an upgrade to new release, which is basically main in this case, right? And <clears throat> we make a couple of uh, VMs in the old release and we make sure they can be migrated after the, after the upgrade or they are still running. So yeah, we should have some confidence. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to the schedule. Uh, can you scroll down, Andrew, a little bit? All right, that's good. Okay, so um, uh, I'm gonna have to change the dates a little bit because um, we're we're already a little uh, a little off on a few things. And um, so basically what um, uh, the, the idea here is that in, in the March 
timeline here, what we want to do is we want to tag an alpha off of main and we want to start the 127 provider. Kubernetes has already released its 127 alpha three. So they're already far along with their next release. So um, the idea is we want to start. So we're going to get a tag for alpha and we want to start the work on uh, the provider. So going to April, we uh, there'll be a second tag. We're going to call this alpha.1. So there'll be a second tag. And then um, we want to have at this point um, a pre submit job based on the 127 provider. So the idea is we can just run um, we can run this on demand when we need to just to get a better idea of how we're doing against the 127 release. So that's April. In May, the goal is that we we have our CI lanes uh, voting on the new provider. So that CI lane one twenty seven is up, and we're and we're we now have pre submit jobs running everywhere against our PRs and, and and they're voting. And then we hit June. June is when we want to have um, our feature freeze release candidates and, and the the release. Um, so this is important that we close in on having the 127 lanes being fully voting and enforcing and we're testing against this and and we hit our branch in, in the beginning of June and then we go through our usual stabilization phase and, and do our release. So just to summarize, it's it's a few phases. It's just so so March we're gonna it's March is the provider, April is gonna be we work on um, adding a pre-submit job based on the new provider. May is going to be working toward making lanes voting. June is we're going to have everything, we want to have everything voting and then we want to do our future freeze and release. Okay, now uh, any questions and thoughts from people on that? I have uh, one vague question. So this looks like we're releasing 10 weeks after the Kubernetes 127 release. Is that about 10 weeks thereabouts? Um, is, is that something we're looking at maintaining over time or will we eventually look to shorten that? Yeah, so it's a good question. So the what we have said um, in the... In the for for releases is that we want to do uh, I think it's plus it's about about plus eight from the eight weeks from the Kubernetes release that's like our it's going to be a, at least the initial target um, this one the math just kind of worked out that it ends up being a little bit more um, so the so the kind of second part of your question of whether this can be shortened it's possible I think we're, there are some other factors at play here like particularly when we talk about like look at vendors, people who are using this stuff. Um, look, we want to have some time after the Kubernetes has been released to make sure that uh, that any features that we need to have against that release get developed and, and get into tree before the release is, is cut. So there's this, there's a little bit of time in between. So that's kind of that eight week gap that we want to use to make sure that we we develop any of those features. So um, it's possible, I guess, is the answer is that it could shrink. Um, it's just really dependent on, um, you know, whether we can come to an agreement that, you know, we don't need as much time um, and, and our ven and vendors don't need as much time to work on those features. You know, maybe then this can be lowered, but I, I think, you know, what we're, what we're saying now is that we, we need this window and maybe in the future it could be lower. I mean, I think if I, if I may chime on this, which I'm in on this. That's actually why we are uh, wanting to discuss the base platform which we are testing on, which actually is like so. So we are test. We are trying to test as early on as as possible against the new release of Kubernetes. So we of course target RC or even earlier uh, versions to be included inside the Kubernetes provider, so that we can be as sure as possible that we can land as soon as possible as, as it as it gets somehow. So um yeah so like I, like Ryan already said I think um this could be shrinked um 
if we are successful in uh, providing a stable provider for testing as soon as possible. Yeah, that's one. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's that's all I had for uh, for the schedule and and for the next review. So, I'll, uh, we'll have a we'll have some vault mailing list thread. So keep an eye on for those if you have any more questions or comments. Thank you. Um, I, just before we wrap up with this, um, we talked about. Um, on a regular basis, I think every community call will have a look and just check in where in the schedule we are and, and celebrate the milestones as we pass them. Um, did we want to have like, do we want to copy this and move it up to the top of the template? Um, or do we want to have this in a central spot like in the um, Qvert Qvert wiki release that we just prefer to? I'd, I'd probably prefer the latter because it's just having it in one spot. Yeah, I like the idea of having this in a wiki, and then we can open the, the web page and and review and um, you know see as we're progressing through our milestones and just raise them as we you know as we approach them. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and yeah, so I, I, it seems like you had this um, uh, pre-prepared. Is this somewhere now, or is this just you've got it somewhere local and you're still working on it? It, it, this was um, it was so I it was originally in the wiki and I, then I copied and made some modifications and yeah I need to bring it back to the wiki. I got I got to if you I don't have permissions though so if you would do or I was gonna ask Fabian to do it then uh, please do. I pr I will need to make modifications though because like we haven't tagged Alpha Zero yet. Um, so there is, there's, but if you want to take what's here, that's fine. And we can do modifications later. That's, that's okay too. Okay. I do not also, I also do not seem to have edit rights on that wiki. So we'll have to bring in Fabian or someone that does. All right. Thanks for that. Um, nothing on the open floor, but if uh, anyone wants to add something there, then we will have time while we run through some of these um, pull requests that require some attention. Um, similarly, if you have any pull requests that require attention, anything that um, you want to highlight from the mailing list or any bugs that have come up that need attention, um, I've tried to grab the ones that jumped out at me, which we'll run through now, but by all means, um, as we go through, please, please add them. Um, so we've got... This one, um, Kubert, Kubert. Um, add get console API. Okay, it needs an okay to test. It doesn't look like it's gotten one while we've started the thing. Um, if anyone's able to have a look at that and see if it makes sense, that would be great. Similarly, um, yeah, we have another one here, which is uh, using an environment run book. If this makes sense to someone, um, you want to have a look at it and have some time this week, that would be great. So if someone, I think this is someone who's involved or interested in the Google Summer of Code, um, hit this problem, um, building Qubit manifests. Um, this was from last week and I haven't seen an answer. Um, is anyone able to provide some insight into this? I believe we follow up on this slide, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Very good. And I think Alice is on this call or was. This is, I noticed that the second PR got uh, some comments, but the first one hasn't. Alice, you're still on the call and, and wish to speak to this one?
She might have dropped. Lisa is not here. Okay. Alrighty. Well, there's a couple of PRs in there. If um, yeah, I want to get involved in that conversation. Um, this one is from Daniel. This is a again. This is just raise the attention um, at the VGPU lanes. Um, yep, it's it's there if you want to read about it. And this one also highlighting um, just in case anyone is still using Docker Hub, um, which I don't think any of us are based on the email from Stu. But if um, if that is you, uh, please read that and act accordingly. Bug scrub, we just have the one. Uh, this was for a killer code thing, but it's interesting that it seems as though that they, um, they noticed that it worked with uh, 0.58, but no longer works with 0.59. That um, if that means something to some people, or you wish to investigate, um, there it is. There was also a bunch of um, what are they called uh, improvements in the enhancement tags from last week. Uh, if anyone's interested in having a look at them, I don't think we normally go through them in this meeting. They're there. And in the interest of time, um, don't think anyone's added anything else to the agenda or the open floor. Um, does anyone have anything that they wish to um, raise or suggest or talk about before we wrap up? That sounds like a no. All right. Well, thank you very much for the discussion today. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and I hope you have a lovely week. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.